Hey YouTube, Kevin Clear with a knife video. Today I have the Steedman or Steadman Knives DSG. Uh, this is a knife that I've had for a little while now, but I've been interested in for quite some time. You know, these knives have been around, uh, and Steedman as a knife company has been around for a fairly good amount of time now. Uh, and so I've been, you know, I was curious right from the start to kind of check out this this sort of new higher end offering uh, coming out of China, and I just didn't really, you know, they didn't have a lot that was really, really appealing to me until this knife came out. Uh, and I still then kind of waited and I was, I finally got a chance to pick one of these up and I've actually been quite pleased with it. Now I'm not going to say this is the greatest knife ever made or anything like that. Uh, I will have uh, some points along the way where I'm a little disappointed, but overall I do find this to be a very good knife. And if you just want to, if you're just signing in to say, you know, hey, is there any major glaring problem where they completely failed at this knife? You know, no, I don't think so. I think overall this is pretty well done, okay? So let me, uh, you know, now that you know that, hey, I've been paying attention for some time, I've wanted to pick one of these up, and so I finally did, um, and, and my overall impression is good. Let me get to the specifics. Uh, this knife is eight and five eighths inches overall. All right, uh, the blade length on it is three and five eighths and the handle length is basically five inches. Like it's kind of just barely under five inches, but it's it's almost too close to even bother mentioning that it's like just, just under, okay? So uh, four and five, uh, eight and five eighths overall, basically five inch handle, three and a half inch blade. You do have this finger choil, which leaves you with three and a half inches of cutting edge, which is quite nice. And that all of that stuff comes in at 5.4 ounces, which is actually quite nice for a knife of this size with this amount of material, fairly thick blade stock, fairly thick G10, um, a fairly hefty backspacer, all that stuff you'd normally expect to see a slightly heavier knife. Uh, where they've saved a lot of weight is there's only a liner on the one side. You can probably see that there now. Okay, so G10 only on this side and then stainless steel liner on that side. Now, the stainless steel liner is not milled out at all. Uh, I actually overall really like the way they've done this liner and I'll comment on that uh, when we kind of uh, continue through the rest of the, when we get to that discussion, lockup and, and deployment. Okay, so uh, let me give you a couple of comparisons, not only so that you get a kind of handle on the size of this, but also because if you're looking in this price range, in this size range, or in this configuration, uh, there may be some other knives that you might want to check out. So there's the Stedman. Uh, another knife that would be uh, certainly comparable price-wise, you know, as a fairly expensive knife. Um, and even in terms of materials, you know, here you have 3D Machine G10, you have 154 cm steel, VG10 steel, those are pretty comparable. Um, the liners are thicker on the ZT, but it is a liner lock, just the same. And you guys know this is a fairly large knife, so the zero tolerance is a little bigger than the Steedman, Steedman or Steadman, but not much bigger. And keep in mind the, the Steadman weighs considerably less, like more than two ounces less. Okay, uh, so that's one, I think, fairly good comparison. I'm going to pick this up again in a second when we get to lockup and deployment. Uh, another knife that I think is worth mentioning, uh, I've got a little bit, I need to clean this one off, but that's fine, you can see it dirty. Uh, this is the Cold Steel uh, Ultimate Hunter. Okay, and this knife is very similar in size, even in terms of ergonomics. Uh, I do have a finger choil up here. Um, the steel is going to be better, but it's also 3D Machine G10. Uh, so there you go, that's how they compare. Uh, one other knife that I wanted to bring in here, and this is kind of uh, not a perfect comparison, but we have another China-made knife, another, it is a liner lock, okay, it is a flipper, G10 handle. Um, obviously, there's some differences in terms of size and fit and finish and stuff like that, uh, but the T101 Thor from Real Steel, uh, has a lot of the same features and sort of the same mindset as the Stedman in terms of, you know, a ball bearing flipper with liner lock with G10, okay? Uh, by the way, the, the T101 weighs a little bit more. So that's one of the reasons I, I say I'm impressed with the, the size to weight ratio on this. It gives you a nice big knife that's, that's plenty tough enough and durable enough uh, while not being oppressive or, or even uncomfortable to carry with you. Okay, so there you go guys, that's size and weight and some comparisons for you. Now the blade on this 
is drop point uh, black wash finish. Uh, you do have this nice big toil, which I actually really like. There is this top swedge cut out. Uh, essentially, this is a full flat grind, okay? The only, obviously, part that's not flat, doesn't carry that full flat grind is the top swedge. Uh, it is a nice drop point. The, the blade shape is pretty nice because you have a really good combination here of belly. You know, the belly kind of starts here and finishes out at the tip. It's not a super aggressive, you know, type stabbing tip. It's fairly gentle, which means this is a, a nice utility knife. You can use it in those places where, uh, let's say, hold on. See how, see how pointed this knife is compared to that. Um, I would feel a little more comfortable using this, let's say, if I was on a fire call or something and there was a, a chance where I'd need to cut a uniform or a seat belt or who knows what else. Uh, that's handy to kind of, to have a less aggressive tip. Okay, not that it wouldn't be appropriate for any kind of stabbing. And that's one thing I will say is the, the grip will get to this, but it will, uh, it will give you a lot of, of positive grip. Uh, one thing I will say about this blade, it's a fairly thick, big piece of steel. Uh, that is one of the reasons that this knife is as heavy as it is. Now, here's the kind of downside on the blade. It's VG10 steel, okay? And... You know, VG10 at $140, I feel like the steel should be better. And I've said this about some SOGs. Uh, you know, there's a lot of more expensive SOG knives that are in that price range and above that price range that use VG10. I just feel like if I, even if I break the $100 mark, I really expect S30V or better. Okay, that's just me. I know there are some 154CM blades out there from Benchmade and stuff. And, and I would say the same thing about those. Okay, I feel like... You know, at that price point, after $100, I expect to see S30V or uh, or above, okay? Uh, so I would per, I would say, you know, it, it would be a big upgrade and really put this knife into the stratosphere if this was, say, S35VN or something like that, all right? So uh, in terms of the, the function of this blade, it's, it's going to be a really good utility utility blade. Uh, you could do skinning with it, although a bull bearing pivot probably doesn't fit well into that role because all of the gunk and crap that's going to get into that pivot. Um, the, you do have a nice combination of sort of standard straight edge here and then some belly out near the tip. So any kind of slashing, um, any kind of, you know, cutting work that you're going to do, it's it's got a good level of versatility along those lines. It is thin enough. It's not a super, super thin um, edge. Let me zoom in here so I can show you some of this stuff a little better. Now that I'm halfway through the discussion, I'm thinking of it, I know. Okay, so there we go. Oh, sorry about that. I wiggled the camera a little bit. So there you can get a good look at that blade. You can see that black wash coating. Uh, let me go on with what I was saying. The edge geometry here, it's, it's good. And remember, I've done quite a bit of cutting with this knife and I have not had any real problems with it. Okay, so it's not that I'm complaining. Uh, it is a thicker edge geometry, and I'm going to say this, with VG10 steel, that's probably a good choice. You know, VG10 can be a, a little bit of a rolly steel, but by giving that a little more thickness behind the edge, you're going to increase the toughness and durability on that blade, okay? So the blade is very, very good. I really like the look of it. I love the coating. I love the functionality. Uh, I would like to see this upgraded to a better steel, but really that's about the only downside on the blade itself. I will make a point now just because we're kind of here. Um, you do have this choil, and to go with that finger choil, I would like to have sort of a thumb rest right here. So leave the blade kind of full width for this section, you know, and instead they have done this this swedge cutout, which you can see here. The swedge looks really cool, okay? It does add something to the visual appeal of the knife, but functionally, I would like to have somewhere where I could get my thumb and really get to be able to bear down on something. And, and this is actually pretty thin to allow you to do that, okay? You can move your thumb out the blade a little bit, I guess, but that's not ideal. Uh, and certainly coming back here into the, the thumb ramp, is actually a little awkward. Back here, the thumb ramp feels really good, okay? But as you move up, the natural thing to do is to move your thumb up, and I would have liked to see a spot designed for that, considering you've got the choil, okay? Uh, that That is an ergonomic point, but I made it during blade just because it is kind of uh, part of that whole blade design process. Now, 
let's move on and talk about lock and deployment because this is definitely going to be uh, a good discussion. Uh, this deploys very, very well. Let me zoom out just a little so you can see the whole knife, but you still need to have me in the picture. There we go. Uh, so, free dropper. It's not, um, it doesn't literally just close down on your fingers the way some knives do that are on ball bearings. Uh, let me use the, the T101 Thor to demonstrate. This knife literally just falls, okay? There's, there's no resistance whatsoever, right? It just falls shut. This doesn't just fall, okay? It is basically what I would describe as just right, okay? It's, it's very free, it's very, very smooth, but it's not just gonna fall, all right? So that's really good. Uh, in terms of the, the performance of that ball bearing pivot, I really like that. Uh, the lock is very comfortable. It's comfortable comfortable to actuate. Okay, so that's a win again. Um, there is one thing that I would like to have seen done differently here, and that is you've, you've got some real estate here. Why not give me a thumb stud, okay? Uh, the detent, by the way, is a little weak, but not, as you can see, the knife flips just fine. And technically a weak detent would, if the detent was too weak, I'd have issues flipping it, okay? But I have no issues at all flipping it. Um, but it would be nice. Now you can see, I can actually break that detent on the blade. There we go. Um, it would have been nice to have a thumb stud or even just a cutout here. You know, and this, that maybe this would be a good after, this would be a good project to do. There's a little Sted, Stedman symbol here. If you just put a little cutout in there, on both sides, you could that would give you that opening mechanism, which I actually would think uh, would be kind of helpful. So lock and deployment are very good. It's fast, it's a great flipper, it's comfortable, it's very, very solid, no blade play of any kind. That's, you know, on a, on a ball bearing pivot knife, I hate to say this, but it's almost like not worth talking about because it's really easy to get a ball bearing pivot knife to flip well uh, and be nice and smooth, okay? Where you get, where it's, when it's impressive is if you have a phosphor bronze bushing system here and the knife can flip well and still have no blade play. So the zero tolerance, for example, okay, no ball bearings in here and yet I can still flip it. The blade is still solid as a rock. Okay, so that's impressive. All right, by the way, notice that both the ZT and the real steel do have a thumb stud that allow me to have that opening option where the Stedman doesn't. And I don't think it would damage the aesthetic of the knife to have either a thumb stud or even better yet, a cut in may, may fit a little better with what they were doing. All right, uh, so that's lock up and deployment. Liner lock, now let me speak to the liner lock here for a second. We're still zoomed in, so before I back off, uh, I like how this liner lock is done. It's quite thick. If you look into the handle, you probably won't be able to see it, but I, it, the cutout is fairly fairly far back, leaving you quite a bit of material, and there's no relief cut. And I, I really don't feel like on a liner lock, there ought to be a relief cut. See how on the zero tolerance, there's this cutout here that allows the liner to move easier. I don't feel like that's necessary, and it is going to weaken that liner lock. So here, there's no relief cut, okay? The liner is plenty thick enough. It's not as thick as the ZT, but it's certainly more than thick enough for what you're doing. Consider also with a knife like this, and there are a number of knives like this, let's say this lock were to fail, uh, the knife can't actually close on my fingers because uh, I've got the finger choil there. So I may get a pinch, even if my fingers were further back, you know, I'm likely to stop the blade this way. Uh, I'm not saying we should forgive a weak lock, uh, and this is not a weak lock, but it is nice to have that extra option. All right, so let's, let me come back in here and Zoom out if the camera will listen, which it will. Very nice. Uh, <clears throat> talk to some of the other features on this. Uh, decorative pivot, which is very attractive. I actually, overall, I do think they've done a great job with sort of the look of the knife and the feel of the knife. I, I think that I'll give credit where credit is due. If there's one minor complaint I have, it would be the clip. I hate these spoon-shaped clips. Uh, it feels like, I don't know, why not just take this dimension here and carry it out to the end? So it's just a straight clip. Now it does; a, it is a nice spring clip. It is titanium. Works really, really well. So it's there's not. I'm not complaining here about performance at all. I'm not complaining about um, 
Even the, the overall look of the knife, I think is still good, but I would have liked to see just a thinner pocket clip there. Maybe you like those, those fat, thick clips. I can tell you right now, um, I have never and would never buy any of those Kershaws. There's a bunch of Kershaws from a couple of years ago that have these wild pocket clips and it just totally turns me off. I just never buy that knife, okay? So, uh, this one is not nearly as bad as some of those knives were, but it's sort of a little bit of that. Like, why make it a spoon shape? Just make it straight, okay? Anyway, back to uh, our impressions on the handle, which is what we've been talking about. There is a nice thumb ramp here, and it works in terms of locking your hand in, but it would have been nice to have a little bit of jimping here. Otherwise, though, um, and, and here's what I'll say about that. The jimping is not necessary because the rest of the knife is so insanely grippy. This, this cut-in pattern in the G10, which you see quite a bit, you see a lot of pimpers do it. Uh, my... my Real Steel H6 has it. Um, there are a few other knives. Uh, it, it, it is very grippy, okay? Whether you like the look of it or not, and I kind of like the look of it, but if you don't, that's fine. That's totally your prerogative. But what I will say is whether you like the look or don't like the look, the grippiness is appreciated. It does a great job of achieving a high, high amount of friction without, you know, tearing your, your, hand or your pocket or anything else apart. So it's really well done that way because of the space between the ridges, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't act like sandpaper. It just acts like really positive grip, which is exactly what it's supposed to be. All right, uh, reverse grip. This is still very comfortable. Draw cuts, still fairly comfortable. Okay, better than, I'm, I had a knife recently that I put in this position and found it not comfortable at all, but this is not bad. Other than you can't, you do have to back up. See this, this, uh, finger guard here is going to get in the way so you've got to move your hand back and now it's totally fine okay if I get up too far yeah that's going to be a problem all right uh, so uh, the grip I think is totally totally acceptable um, very attractive with that decorative pivot I do like the way they've carried off the the lanyard hole again I don't use lanyards I feel like I say that in every video um, don't use lanyards but there is a lanyard hole there if you're a big lanyard guy. I will say this in terms of um, just the general use of this knife. It's very comfortable and I found myself when I was using this for harder tasks, I, I found that it worked pretty well. It's, it's a fairly positive, fairly hand filling knife, which is one of those things that goes back to how much knife you're getting for a fairly light weight. I do like the uh, the one side G10, the one side uh, stainless steel liner that that I think is a good move on on uh, Steedman's or Stedman's part. I think that's a good design choice uh, and a good engineering choice. Okay, G10 is very strong. I don't think you're giving up anything in terms of strength, but you are gaining uh, some some weight back so that you can you know get a lighter knife for whatever size you're making. So I do like that uh, overall. Great knife. I will say this is one of those knives that if you're addicted to sitting and watching TV while you flip a knife, uh, you're going to love this knife. The biggest thing that I would say as a detraction for me is the VG10 steel. And I will, and even though I would like to see better steel, that's more of a theoretical point, okay? My experience with this steel has been good. I haven't been like, oh man, I just used this, now it's dull. Uh, not at all. It's, it's held its edge totally fine. Uh, but it's just a matter of what you're getting for what you're paying. I would like to actually see a slightly higher end steel on this or on the other hand, based on materials and on this steel, drop the price down to closer to $100. All right, so there you go. Uh, that's my take on the Stidman DSG. Uh, I do like the knife. I have rather enjoyed carrying it and using it uh, and will continue to do so. We'll talk to you soon. Hope you enjoyed the video.